killing of Jamal Khashoggi has sent diplomatic shockwaves across the world, with many urging Saudi Arabia's traditional allies in the West, the United States and the UK, for example, to rethink their relationship with their strategic ally in the Gulf, to rethink arms sales and investments. Here in London, the Saudi royal family and its friends have always received a warm welcome. But so too have members of Saudi Arabia's dissident community, including Ghanam al-Dasari, a YouTube blogger and political satirist. In August, he was beaten up by men he claims were sent by Riyadh to silence him. I'm Simon McGregorwood and I've spoken to Ghanam al-Dasari one-on-one. We saw him welcoming the son of Jamal Khashoggi. It's like uh, nothing has happened. The cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. He lied to the whole world when he says Jamal has left the consulate. Somebody really messed up. Very young and ruthless in Saudi Arabia. Nobody will dare conduct action without a permission from the king or the crown prince. Ghanam al Dasari, Saudi exile, political satirist, YouTube blogger. Thank you very much for joining us here one-on-one. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So we're meeting in the shadow of the death of Jamal Khashoggi. I want to ask you, first of all, um, how surprised, how shocked were you um, that he was killed in this way? Well, I wasn't surprised the, the Saudis uh, kidnap people from abroad, but I was shocked they have done it in, in, in another country's soil, in a consulate with a premeditation to kill him and dismember his body. That is a new approach from the Saudis and it shows me uh, they are getting out of rage and they, they have they think they can go, get away with it. So this, in your view, this wasn't a, a kidnapping, this wasn't an attempt to warn him, this was out and out designed from the very beginning to kill him. Absolutely. Uh, the Saudis says uh, they tried to negotiate with him uh, and trying to convince him to bring him back to Saudi Arabia. But when you are negotiating or trying to convince someone, you listen to one, one or two people to do that, but they, are, they have sent 15, and one of them is expert in anatomy and dismembering bodies. So I, I don't know what, uh, what type of negotiation they're trying to sell it to us and expect us to believe it. Who ordered his killing, do you think? I have no doubt that in Saudi Arabia, nobody will dare to uh, conduct action like this, or uh, without a permission from the king or the crown prince. In your view, which one of them was it? Uh, the crown prince. Mohammed bin Salman? Yes, sir. Uh, Mohammed bin Salman, yes, with no doubt. He's in charge of everything, and I don't think the king was aware. This no narrative that it was a rogue operation, people who might have been trying to do something to please the crown prince, you're not buying no. into that? No, no, nobody will, uh, will please him in that way. Nobody will dare to um, get two planes, where get these people together and send them abroad to do that. And he knew the sequences, but except the crown prince himself. What does it tell us about the crown prince and his personality and his methods? And I wonder, in a follow-up to that, if you put him yourself in his position, how he could have thought he could get away with it? Well, um, my personal view is that he thinks by signing contracts with the West, uh, w when he w was here in London and met with the Queen and then he went to the White House and signed all this, he thought by signing this contract, it's like, uh, okay, they will, they will not say anything about me and I can do whatever I want, not even inside the kingdom, but outside in international uh, soil. So this is my point of view. And he thought he will get away with it. And in a personal level, I think he's um, very young and ruthless. And on top of that, 
I think he's psycho, to be honest. And this is my... Psychopathic, I think. Uh, absolutely. Nobody will um, do such an action like this to innocent man. That man has no weapons. He has a pen. And he just writes his uh, own opinion. So if he's willing to do that, and if he's willing to, uh, to get him to killed and his body dismembered, we don't know where his body is. And he tried to deny anything. He lied to the whole world when he says, Jamal has left the consulate in his interview with Bloomberg. And then he, uh, uh, with the international pressure on him, he had to admit, but he framed it in the 15th. So, uh, and we saw him welcoming the son of Jamal Khashoggi. And it's like uh, nothing has happened. I was wondering what is going through Jamal's son at this moment when he's shaking his hand, and I, there is a, you know a picture of the of the incident, and it's it tells us a lot. I think he was saying, "I'm shaking the hand of my father's killer." Mr. Khashoggi was a critic, a well-known critic, a high-profile critic of the regime. You also are a critic of the regime. You have a reasonably high profile out there on social media. Um, and I think you have been targeted, clearly not in such a serious way, but in quite recent times. I understand the long hand of the regime has reached out to you. Tell us about what happened to you. Well, um, let me explain one thing, the difference between me and Jamal. Jamal was with, within the system. He spent his entire life working with the, with the government. So they will not have it it's, you know, when you're working with the Saudi government, it's like you are with a mafia. If you are in, you are in. If you leave them, then you expect, uh, you face the sequences. And, um, and that, that is a different story. I haven't worked with the government between me and Jamal. Um, and of course, it's, that doesn't mean if they get their hand on me, they will uh, uh, invite me for a dinner. But they tried. Yes, that's what I was heading to say. Um, that was in 31st of uh, August. I was with a friend here in Knightsbridge in broad daylight in front of Harrods on Prompter Road, and we was, I was attacked. And even when my friend tried to stop them, he stood in between, of, uh, between us, and they uh, even shouted a disgusting language toward the British police and toward the Queen. And, uh, Did you expect anything like that? I mean, you obviously no, have your no. you have your opposition to the to the the government in Riyadh, but did you expect them to be so bold? No, no. This is why I said uh, the Crown Prince is psychopath. If he's willing to do the, this, and I think because he done it here in London, and I I think he he got away with it because we don't know the attackers. They have left the country as far as I know, and I received a phone call from Saudi from someone who claimed to be one of the attackers and he's safe back in Saudi Arabia. And when they attacked me, they shouted his name and they are defending him. The Crown Prince is Yes, yeah, the, the Crown Prince's name and it's clearly in the video. Do you think he sent them? Absolutely, I have no doubt. And because he got away with it or he thinks so, he thought so, he, uh, within a couple of weeks, we saw what happened to Jamal. And I think he's gonna continue on silence and anybody who's, who dare to speak or if, at a personal level, how has that affected you, your, your attack, your incident in the centre of London? Are you scared? Have you changed your routine? Do you think they've finished with you? Or? No, they haven't finished because I receive uh, death threat on a daily basis. Uh, I've had up going to the police and reporting them because there are too many, but I do save them and sometimes I publish them in the uh, social media just to get uh, awareness. Are you scared? Yes, uh, after what I saw and the attack on me here, and uh, with the continuation of uh, threatening through uh, my social media, I receive it uh, on a daily basis through WhatsApp, through Twitter, every, with voices. They are not afraid to threaten, and they are threatening to, to I will be next after Jamal. So, yeah, I have changed the way I, 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 I used to be. What? Have you thought of the global reaction to Jamal Khashoggi's killing? It has been quite widespread. It's been vociferous. There's been a lot of open criticism uh, of the Saudis. 
uh, is it enough for you? No, at the beginning I was so happy. I thought they are really going to take it seriously. But uh, within the last couple of days when, we saw, when I heard the announcement from President Trump when he, when he says he believes in the Saudi version and with uh, uh, President Erdogan when he, oh, well, it's, it's basically his statement is like cover up and he doesn't want to involve the king or even I think the crown prince right now. So I think they, they're going to cover it up, but I was happy at the beginning and I thought the one who is responsible will face justice. And as the whole world got together um, after that incident and with the, with the pressure from the international community and the media, the Saudis has to admit otherwise they wouldn't, they wouldn't even dare to uh, answer. They was quiet for a couple of, uh, I think two or three weeks almost. They only admitted uh, recently. So, and they admitted and they framed uh, the, the attackers. So, the killers, actually, because they killed him. And so once they killed him, they wore, wore his clothes and walked in Istanbul. And it's like if nothing has happened and they're just smiling, going from a restaurant to a mosque. I don't know what, what type of religion they are following. To kill innocent man and just to go straight to the mosque. It, it makes me rethink. Do you, can't, do you not see that there is pressure, even in Washington, on President Trump from Republicans in the Senate and elsewhere, here in London and across Europe? Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, announced that she would cease arms trading. You don't feel that this has changed? It's not a game-changing moment? It is a game-changing moment, but I think it should continue. Um, if it doesn't continue, then, then uh, you know, the story where the people will forget it and uh, it will go away. And the Saudis have a large amount of money. They can buy anything, to be honest. They can buy politics, they can, uh, politicians, they can, they do, and this is what they have been doing for decades. With the pressure and with the actions we have seen from Angela Merkel, from the joint statement uh, between France and UK and Germany, I wish we will see more and we get to the bottom of who ordered the killing, uh, and which I have no doubt is the Crown Prince. And if he ordered it and has been approved, he should, uh, he should face the consequences of it. And he should what do you think those consequences should be for him? At least, at least impose sanctions on him. On personally. Him personally? Personally, yes. Not to the whole country. Uh, the Saudis, uh, people are innocent as well. They are victims, to be honest. They, they have no say. They didn't elect the government. They can't even say anything. And as we saw what happened to Jamal abroad, what we should expect happening to them on a daily basis. And we heard the Crown Prince, the same day, day he lied to us about the... Uh, about Jamal uh, Faith, he's, he's, he says uh, the prisoners in Saudi, especially the women who campaigned to get women thriving, he says they are, uh, um, he have evidence against them. So if you have, if that's what he's saying, and he killed innocent man for, with, with, with no crime, uh, Jamal has, is not, hasn't committed any crime. So what sh we should expect he's doing inside the kingdom. I wonder, from what you hear from inside Saudi Arabia, how secure you think um, Mohammed bin Salman is? Um, what has been the popular reaction? Is there any sense that you're getting that people are shocked internally? Do you think that there might be a move against him? Yes. Uh, in the same time, when he, when he committed this uh, crime and with the one on me, he sends, he, he, he believes he's sending a message to the oppositions and to people inside the kingdom. Anybody will dare to leave us or to speak up, this is what gonna happen to you. Um, but in this, uh, when he speaks to the international community, they deny being involved and they act if they are not a rogue regime or they can't commit such a, a, a crime. But if uh, uh, the Crown Prince not being held accountable of this, um, then, uh, sorry, I would like to get back to your question. Yeah, inside the kingdom, Saudi people uh, start 
they hate him, but they are very afraid. I receive in my Snapchat, I can show you my social media, or I receive on a daily basis. They even drive, and they, when they see his pictures, they stop and abuse him with a, a, a disgusting language. They are, and especially the young people, they are afraid, and they knew he's a liar. And, but they can't do nothing, because he terrified the whole nation. But I do believe, I do believe from what I'm seeing now and what I'm hearing, this guy uh, could be assassinated at any some point, especially from the royal family who is close to him. Um, he been very harsh on them, and he's uh, even stole their money when he imprisoned them. Uh, the rats, the whole world knew. So he appears from the outside to be all powerful, but you think, with your connections with the distant community, he's inside very weak. And I saw his, uh, yesterday, he, uh, he, uh, he spoke yesterday at what he calls da yes. Desert Davis or Future, whatever. And he uh, pretend to be relaxed. And he pretend uh, to not to care of what the pressure has came from uh, uh, outside. And he's not, and he, he talk about the future as like if nothing is gonna happen. But I think inside he is, um, he, he's weak and he's terrified. So we're all aware that the Saudis, the Crown Prince, hosting this investment conference. And we're also aware that in the light of the Khashoggi killing, uh, many people, high profile people, pulled out of that in reaction to the incident. Um, however, many hundreds of CEOs from America and from Europe wanting the business opportunities presented by Saudi Arabia's changing future have chosen to go. I mean, isn't the truth really that Saudi Arabia is simply too important to be ignored? Turning away from it, abandoning it as a strategic ally, that's never going to happen, surely? True. Saudi Arabia is a very rich country. And each country in the world has the right to uh, make business with Saudi. Any corporation, any company, any... It, it, but it doesn't mean we are selling you our product and we are selling our values as well. The, so the Crown Prince should understand it that way and should work with the international community in this basis. He can make business. Each country wanted to make business. They will be lucky to get that deal. And President Trump was very clear about uh, that he's not uh, hiding. He says, we, we need the money from Saudi, we have to work. Even Khashoggi is not important to us. But that's a consideration, isn't it, for a, it is. for a politician? If in the States you're selling billions of dollars worth of weapons, the fear is that they'll simply buy them from somewhere else, like Russia. Yeah, that's what President uh, Trump says, and he wants them to continue buying from uh, them. But it's, it's not easy for Saudi to go and just buy it from Russia. The whole system, the whole software, the whole military, it's American and it's uh, British. You can't change it in one day to the, the uh, Russian system. You need at least seven years. This is what I think and why I've heard. But the main question is, the Saudi government has... Um, uh, I have been told from uh, very uh, high-profile politicians in, in the West that the Saudis was threatening them. Basically, it's not a direct threat, but saying, if you don't work with us, if we were happen to f fall down, then the world will not be stable. The Saudis uh, were, uh, is just terrorists, and we are holding them from you, from the West. They are presenting the Saudi people to the West as terrorists, and the Saudi royal family is the ones who will control them, I don't know, if they, I think they look at them like their own slaves because the Saudis has no right in that kingdom, in that kingdom. So I would like to make it very clear, I know the Saudis, I am one of them. They are not uh, extremists, they are not terrorists. The people you're talking The about. people, of course, the people of Saudi Arabia, they are a human being, they are normal, they want to live like anyone else in the world. They want their rights, which has been taken away from them. As we also, women, on the only country in the world who 
prohibited women from driving in Saudi, and it's only the, the, the females who campaigned to get it back, they're all in imprisonment now. So too many rights from the Saudis has, is taken away from them, and uh, not, uh, not in a financial uh, way, but even politically, they can't elect even their local uh, uh, council. So it's, it's uh, if the Saudis has been given their rights, uh, if they have election, um, and if they have well uh, education system, we wouldn't see the horrible image that the Saudis sold to the whole world uh, as they are thugs I don't, I, I think, and, and terrorists. A cynic might say that if you read the spy novels, we know that the Russians and we know that the Americans and the British and other secret services have occasionally used extreme measures against people they don't like uh, and they got away with it. Isn't this just part of real politique? Why should we be so hard on the Saudis? Americans kill opposition people. Look, yeah, they kill them. So the allegation goes? No, yeah, but I mean, they don't kill in, in, a, in a consulate, in international. And they, uh, they kill uh, the killing from other countries who I've read and who I know about. It's like spies who affected the, the international, uh, the national security of their country or who exposed some private. This guy is a generalist and he's just writing. And you are con committing this crime in another country, in a consulate with no regret whatsoever for human life or for the international law. For, so uh, it is different, it is different. And also the others, they've been accused, okay? But we saw what happened to Skribal, the UK uh, accusing them, but there is no proof. The Saudi Crown Prince has given the full uh, proof except we don't know where is the body. We know the killers, we know where they come from, we know their pictures, we know everything. So, you see what I mean? You've been living in exile now for some time. Um, do you have any optimism that things in Saudi Arabia will change uh, in the near term at all? Yes, sir, I see, uh, I, I, from what I see in Saudi people, they are, uh, they fed up. They went to live free like any other people in the world. I receive this is on a daily basis, which uh, I don't even have time to publish everything uh, on, uh, online. And if, even if I publish it, it's gonna be in Arabic. We need to translate it to English too. But Saudi people are fed up, fed up, and they want to live. And uh, if the West didn't help them and stood with them, uh, to gain the right, then I do think they will look at the West our enemy as well as the houses of Ben Saud. And what about you, Ghanem al Dosari? You have felt the heat of the Saudi regime on the streets of London. Has that made you think again about the kind of satire that you put out? Are you toning it down? No, sir, I will continue to, to, to do what I'm doing. And I don't think it's not a crime. I do think it's not a crime. And if they are willing to kill me, I'm not gonna be the last. There are too many people who can continue to do that. So if you were in my position and you receive uh, this millions of followers and they are so happy and they are encouraging you to, to continue doing what you are doing and they are telling you you are our only voice, I don't think you will back up of it, even if you receive a threat. Given what you've know now about Jamal Khashoggi's fate, um, does that make you think that they won't try it again with you, or does it make you think that they might try it again with you? Um, they, when it comes to UK and America, they are very careful. This is how they used to behave, not with this uh, current Congress. You don't think they do it in the London Embassy? To kill someone in, in, in London, um, in the current, uh, uh, they, I don't think they tried it. They wouldn't try it? They wouldn't because they knew the sequences of it. Because the, the, the British and the Americans, they, 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 they take it very seriously. It's a red line to commit crime in our uh, soil. You told me before this interview that in 2010, 
your Saudi passport ran out, but you were too scared to go to the embassy in London to renew it. If you wanted to travel somewhere internationally today, would you dare go to the Saudi embassy in London no. to renew it? <laughs> of course not. Of course not. I, will not uh, I, I haven't walked into the embassy at that time, 2010, when I was in high profile as I am now. And of course, I will not walk uh, into the embassy now. Um, uh, they refused to extend my passport, the Saudi passport, when it's expired, and they asked me to come personally inside the embassy, which I refused. And uh, I am happy I refused because if I went there, uh, I could have been uh, first Jamal, and we went, nobody will know what happened. Ganam al Dasari, thank you so much for joining us on One on One. It's been great talking to you. You're welcome.